right now on News Channel 8 at 6. The doctors have told us that he won't wake up. A man is critically injured in a spear fishing mishap. Now his family is praying for a miracle. And this video is shocking. An FSU football player punching a girl in the face at a bar. We're going to tell you what the university is doing about it. And it's a project that's been dragging on for years. We're going to show you if crews are any closer to finishing up work on US-19. Good evening, everyone. I'm Josh Benson. And I'm Stacy Scheibel. Thank you for joining us. Well, a Sarasota man is on life support after he was shot in the head with a spear gun. But his family says it does not look like he's going to survive. News Channel 8's John Rogers spoke to his mom and dad. He joins us now live in Sarasota. John, I can't imagine what this family is going through tonight. Good evening, Josh. Yeah, you have to feel for them. They're relying on faith during this challenging time. The accident actually happened in these waters not far from the Ringling Bridge, and the family hopes that this story can serve as a lesson to other spear fishermen. On Saturday afternoon, Jared Dittmers and his friend Dale Bartish were spear fishing under this bridge near the second piling when Bartish's spear gun accidentally went off and the spear thrust itself right through Dittmers' head. The prognosis is extremely grim. Dittmer's parents say multiple doctors have tried to help him, but there's not much they can do. The doctors have told us that he won't wake up. Jared spent every free moment he could spearfishing, but his father says the water conditions were very murky on Saturday afternoon. It just wasn't a good day to dive. I didn't know he was going to dive there or I would have said something to him. The parents say their son's tragedy highlights the danger of this sport and they hope people learn from this. If what happened to our son can change safety laws or gun manufacturing requirements in some way to help someone else, then, you know, that's our goal here today. The Dittmers understand tragedy. Well, they lost I a son to cancer in 2001. To parents, tell your kids you love them every single day. Um, and kids, don't walk out of the house mad at your parents. Stop and make up. <laughs> the Dittmers are already looking into funeral preparations, but they still have hope. It's not too late to pray for a miracle. The family plans to wait 24 hours as they gather together and prepare to say goodbye. They've set up a GoFundMe account online to uh, collect money for medical costs and funeral expenses, and so far it's raised more than $5,000. Josh? Oh, this poor family. Have they, have they had a chance to talk with the man who fired the spear gun yet? I did ask that, and they actually spoke with him by phone, but they hope to meet him soon in person because they want him to fully understand that this was a horrible accident, and they forgive him. Yeah, very forgiving family. All right, John Rogers live in Sarasota tonight. Thanks, John. Well, disturbing new video has surfaced tonight. It shows a Florida State quarterback punching a girl in the face at a bar. Yeah, disturbing for sure. He's been suspended over this incident now, and sports anchor Dan Lucas joins us with the latest. This, this video says an awful mm. lot. It says a lot, and it's just not exactly what the school wants right. on the heels of what it's been through in the past couple of years. But acting quickly, that happened more than a week ago. DeAndre Johnson, a freshman at Florida State, he played uh, in the spring football game, but tonight his FSU career is in jeopardy. Let's see this video. Johnson charged with battery more than a week ago after allegedly punching a woman at a Tallahassee bar. Well, this surveillance video shows the incident. A victim at the bottom of the picture there. According to the woman's statement, Johnson had pushed his way to the bar, and she confronted him about it. She's the, the blonde there. He's in the backwards ball cap. The video shows contact. It also shows the woman uh, throwing a punch. But State Attorney Willie Meggs was convinced by this video to pursue the case against Johnson. Now, Johnson, who is from Jacksonville, had just earned praise from his head coach, Jimbo Fisher, uh, during spring football practice. All of a sudden, he faces an uncertain future, beginning with the charge he faces for this incident. All right, thank you, Dan. Well, a devastating fire in Largo that destroyed livelihoods may have been caused by fireworks set off on the 4th of July. Fire officials are still working to confirm the cause, but they have not ruled that out. News Channel 8's Lauren Make joins us now. She is live in Largo. And Lauren, what are you learning more about the fire today? 
Good evening, Stacy. Well, so far, they don't believe that it was an electrical issue or arson, but lightning and fireworks are still on the list as possibilities. Now, today they put up these fences here behind me to keep people out because it really could be dangerous in there. But I spoke with a couple who just had to see for themselves. I actually had the little unit right here on the end when we started 18 years ago. Mike and Sharon Carter came to see what was left of what they built. What was it like? It's, it was devastating. Everything's burned to the ground. There's uh, nothing left. The intense fire even caused the ceiling to collapse. How did you hear that it had happened? I got a phone call from my brother saying it's gone. It's gone. House of Shades and Lamps is a family business. This is how Sharon Carter remembers it. Her granddaughter running through the aisles, squealing with glee. So this view is hard to see. Our life gone. Sorry. Okay. The fire that took so much started in an unusual way, high up in the building. It's one reason officials haven't ruled out fireworks as the cause. Uh, there were also witness statements, uh, witnesses stating that they did hear and see fireworks that night. The fire was so hot, it may have burned up evidence. Could fireworks cause a fire like this? It could if, if fireworks were to hit the building and it went unchecked. Mike Carter's message to anyone using them. It's illegal, number one, and it can devastate people's lives. But from devastation, they try to carry on. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take orders and complete orders that have been in there. Our vendors are backing us up 100%. So. so this isn't the end? No, it's never the end. You can't just say it's it, you know? Supposed to be the American dream. Sometimes you have to rebuild. They are trying to do just that. This family does not have insurance for their business, but they looked at a new location today. They are forwarding calls to their cell phone and just trying to keep working. Stacy. Boy, you feel for him. Such raw emotion. Uh, it, it, just awful. And you mentioned that the evidence may have actually burned up, so is there a chance we'll never know the cause? Absolutely. There is definitely quite a possibility of that, actually. However, I can tell you that this has certainly stirred that conversation about the dangers of fireworks. Stacy. Absolutely. Lauren Make reporting live in Largo tonight. Thank you. The search continues for what could have sparked a huge fire that destroyed a piece of Tampa history. Over the weekend, the Guerri Cigar Factory burned to the ground on 26th Street in Tampa. That building was built in 1899 and has been vacant for years. But preservationists had hope, had held out some hope the old factory could have been developed into loft apartments. That's something that Ybor City really needs is residential. And when something like that goes away, it potentially takes away uh, additional residents for Ybor City. There had also been another fire at the vacant building in 2000, but it was minor and it was put out quickly. That sure didn't happen this time. Well, a popular restaurant is closing its doors and the reason behind it, pretty unusual. Yeah, we're gonna tell you why the owner of the Sarasota restaurant says the homeless hurt his bottom line. Eight on your side is looking into why construction on US-19 is taking so long to complete. We'll show you if the multi-million dollar incentive offered by the governor has sped things up. Thunderstorms at the moment are mostly in inland spots. They're strong. We've seen some small hail today. High temperature of 89 degrees. We'll look ahead to your work week forecast coming up shortly.